This war has a few different names. The British call it the First Boer War, but it has also been called the Transvaal Rebellion. This tale takes place in modern-day South Africa. The British and Dutch had long fought over this region, but eventually they created the Anglo-Dutch Treaty of 1814. This treaty returned the ownership of Dutch colonies prior to the Napoleonic Wars back to the Netherlands, with the exception of the Cape of Good Hope and other South American settlements. In the Cape of Good Hope, there were still many Dutch people now living under British rule. They had two main problems with how the British operated. They did not want racial equality between whites and blacks within the colony, and they also felt they were being politically marginalized. These grievances led to 15,000 ethnically Dutch citizens of the colony, known as Vortrekkers, to leave the colony and move inward into Africa. This event is known as the Great Trek, and it led to the foundation of three new sovereign states, each known as the Orange Free State, the South African Republic, also known as Transvaal, and the Natalia Republic. But the Natalia Republic was short-lived and seceded from the Zulu Kingdom. The citizens adopted the name Boer, which translates to farmer in Dutch and Afrikaans. Each of the new Boer republics were recognized by the British Empire as independent sovereign states by the 1852 Sand River Convention and the 1854 Bloemfontein Convention. With the independence of these states, the southern portion of Africa was very divided. It didn't take long for the British to want to expand the Cape Colony. The British wanted control of Southern Africa for three reasons. Reason number one was to control trade routes to India that passed through the Cape. Reason number two was the discovery of diamond deposits in 1868 along the borders of the Cape Colony and the Boer Republics. Reason number three was the growing pressure from other European powers to colonize more African territory. All of these factors led to the annexation of Transvaal in 1877. The Boers complied with the annexation out of fear of being vulnerable for invasion by Zulu if they fought the British. Once the Anglo-Zulu War had concluded with the British annexing the Zulu Kingdom, the Boers began speaking out against the British, illegally violating the conventions that established their independence. Transvaal formally declared independence from the British Empire, and war promptly began on December 16, 1880. The Boers did not have an official army. Instead, they had a commando system. In times of need, all male citizens between the ages 16 through 60 gathered to assemble a militia, with officers being elected by the citizens in the militia. When each militia mobilized, each soldier used their own horse, rifle, with either 50 or 30 rounds of ammunition, and enough food to last for eight days. The Boers were very skilled marksmen. After all, they grew up on farms and had to defend their land against local African tribes. When on the battlefield, the Boers were very quick to attack and withdraw to get better positions. The British completely underestimated the ability of the Boers. In particular, Major General Sir George Pomeroy Coley, who is blamed for being a large reason in the British defeat. Cully even tried to attack the Boers at Majuba Hill during truce talks. Unfortunately for Cully, he lost the battle and his life. A treaty was signed at O'Neill's Cottage on March 23, 1881, which officially ended the war. The Pretoria Convention finalized the terms which gave Transvaal complete self-governance while also being placed under British suzerainty. This was later suspended by the London Convention of 1884, which gave similar terms except the British suzerainty was dissolved and the British acknowledged Transvaal as the South African Republic. The First Boer War was significant for two main reasons. Reason number one, this was the first conflict since the American Independence War, where the British were defeated and forced to sign an unfavorable peace treaty. This completely embarrassed the British military. And reason number two, this marked the beginning of the end of the British red coat uniform. This was the first of a few changes the British were making after their defeat by the Boers. 
which leads us to the conclusion of this tale. Thank you for making it till the end, and make sure you give the video a like if you enjoyed watching, and subscribe to get instant updates on when I upload next. Also, we just recently surpassed 500 subscribers, which is awesome. Thank you for the support, I hope to continue to make awesome videos for you, and with all that said, I hope to see you in the next chapter.